The book of Numbers began while Israel was out in the wilderness, but it ends here in chapter 36 with the nation being as close to the promised land as they could get without actually being there. They were in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Because they are about to enter into the land that God has promised them, it is only fitting that the elders of the tribes of Israel, they were concerned with land inheritance issues. You see, one of the elders of the tribe of Manasseh, Zelophehad, had no sons, and it was agreed in chapter 27 that the land inheritance would go to the daughters when there was no sons. But this was a problem. What if the daughters married outside of the tribe? their land inheritance would end up in another tribe's possession. So the men brought their concerns to Moses. And led by the Lord, Moses instructs in verse 5, Let them marry whom they think best, but they may marry only within the family of their father's tribe. So the inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers restrictive, strict, and narrow-minded, you might say. But, but what was at stake was more than just an inheritance. It was spiritual ground, and the possession of this ground defined not just the tribal boundaries, but their trust in their God to give it to them. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 begs the question, can two walk together unless they are agreed? As parents following our Lord Jesus, we make sure that our children know that marrying outside the tribe of Christianity is not acceptable. It's without question, non-negotiable. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 6.14 that we are to not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Heaven forbid that we lose spiritual ground to darkness being unequally yoked. The Lord has just the right spouse waiting for our children within the Christian tribe. But we must wait for him, seek him, and trust in his provision. We are told in verses 10 through 12 that just as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. They were married to the sons of their father's brothers. They were married into the families of the children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance, well, it remained in the tribe of their father's family. As we close the book of Numbers, may we make our lives count for the Lord. May we see the importance of order, organization, discipline, and accountability in our lives. May we receive all of what the Lord Jesus promises us instead of wandering in the wilderness of life aimlessly. You are greatly loved, so go and greatly love.